all good. Do you want me to kick off? Yeah, go yeah, for it. Okay, Brill. Um, so basically, everybody, I want to talk today about um, teaching the students who don't want to know. Um, and really, this isn't about a class of 30 that you might have where um, there's, say, two students. I'm, this is more about a class where you might have 10 or more students out of the 30 who um, are completely disengaged, uh, disenfranchised, um, and, and are quite reticent to really go along with, with what you want to do. Um, so th I've created this poster and I've just uploaded it actually about an hour ago to Tez Resources. So I'll post it on my Twitter account after this. Um, but basically, um, I've come up with some things just from my experience. And I'm currently a classroom teacher over in Liverpool, um, in Whiston, in Knowsley. Um, and this last year, I've been teaching as well in Leicester and Blackpool, um, in, in academies, um, kind of history, uh, full time tables. This one's actually a part time role three days a week. Um, but I, I still love teaching. Um, and, and one of the things that interests me the most is this idea of, um, you know, you start with that class and, and you're like, what am I going to do with these students, you know? And, the, and these are things that I've kind of, from my career, I've picked up. The first one is that to show your subject passion, because I feel as though if you can um, project your love of your subject, yeah. Um, whether it be a topic that you're particularly interested in, the, the kids will respond to that, in my experience. It, it, it doesn't matter how disengaged they are. If there's a topic that you're interested in and you can present that in the right way, th there will be some kind of spark with a lot of them in terms of, oh, actually, he's, he's mad interested in this, so maybe we should be, you know? And, uh, and, and that, can, that, that can be there as long as you are passionate about your subject. And most teachers are. So it's just bringing that to the fore um, and almost like adapting your lesson to say, listen, this class here, this is a particular type of challenge here. Other people might not appreciate the challenge. In fact, it may be other people in the school who don't appreciate the challenge. You know, you just never know. But it's like your class. So it's kind of like, what am I going to teach and how am I going to teach this, this lesson? Um, and, and trust your own professional knowledge and judgment on that. The second thing is to just be relentless with the students. And that might mean challenging, not lowering the expectations that you have. Um, this can be really difficult. If you're going in the, the, the class there, you know you're probably going to have to deal with different situations there straight away. There might be some conflict as well. And it's very difficult to kind of stand your ground, defend your boundaries and say, you know what? I'm going to challenge you. And, and for me, it's like, that's important to stand front and centre, to uh, say to the students, look, I want all eyes on me while I'm explaining. I don't expect anybody to shout out. I don't want to be interrupted here. Um, and then to challenge if, if appropriate. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be straight to sanctions. You want to be assertive. You want to, um, you want to use uh, assertive language with the students, but it's not letting things go. And it's almost like being that broken record. Yes, be polite. And, and it doesn't involve shouting, but it does mean you're very, very consistent and you're on top of everything and every student in that lesson, you're making sure that you are not missing anything. Mm -hmm. and, and then it's about keeping that structure tight. It's about it's about giving the students, and I put this down here, it's, it's about giving the students something that they can achieve, something that they can do from the outset. Sometimes there can be pressure within a school to say, look, you have to have these, um, you know, the, these activities that are going to challenge students. Yes, that's absolutely true. But again, as I said, these don't feel pressure too much with a particular class where you sat there saying, listen, I, I need to do something different with these. And someone might say, no, we want you to stick to the, the format. And, and you can say, well, no, in my professional judgment, this is going to be my task that I'm going to start with because I know it's going to work with these students. And I feel comfortable and confident with it. For me, I don't want to be walking in the classroom going, I've got this activity, it's all jazz hands, it's it's brilliant. <laughs> and then go, yeah, but I'm not comfortable with it. So I can't concentrate on what I need to be doing, which is the discipline with those kids, which is the classroom management. I want to be able to go into autopilot with the lesson almost and concentrate on my relationships with those students and how I'm interacting with them and not be concentrating on what do I need to do next with this task. So it might be about simplicity. And I get, I've, I've got a few examples in terms of just um, something where they don't have to spend 30 minutes doing it. You know, I know we talk about starter tasks. They've almost gone out of fashion um, nowadays. You know, it's, it's like recap, retrieval, but actually the old 
you know, you might do a starter after your retrieval activity. And, mm -hmm. and that could be something where it's labeling, um, you know, um, something where it doesn't, it, you know, I know some people say, well, it's not challenging enough. Um, possibly, yeah, but it's about leading in. It's about scaffolding. And it's about doing what you know you're comfortable with with those students, showing you care. And that doesn't have to be fluffy, wishy-washy. Showing you care can be planning lessons. Showing you care can be defending your boundaries. Showing you care can be challenging a student and not giving up on them and not giving up on your own expectations of them. So for me, showing you care it is not about being a mate. It's about um, doing your job and, and showing that you want to be there. Because I think kids in these kind of lessons, they they will know if you don't want to be there. Um, mm. They will know if you're not really um, wanting to teach them. Staying calm as well. And things to remember if you're in this situation to finish off, nothing they say is personal. You will win over some of the students over time. Yeah. Um, every lesson you teach uh, is a win. Yeah. Um, so if you teach a 60 minute lesson with that class and you get through it, and you want to go and you'll go back next time that's a win because every lesson you do will be a marginal gain every lesson you'll do if you're sticking to what you know and what you're trying to do if you're sticking to that then every lesson you teach is going to get a bit easier um and it's not giving it's not saying after two lessons three lessons oh it's not it's not improving you might not even see the improvement for weeks and months and that's where i think with senior leaders as well and other other leaders there has to be that level of patience there as well to say, look, this is a particularly challenging class, this. And it doesn't matter what the experience level of the teacher is. They might have just come in the school, whatever. But to say, give them time to uh, and give them support, you know. And that's the other thing I was going to say is I will ask for support. You know, just last week I was teaching year nine, difficult class. I I've been teaching for 14 years. I would consider classroom management one of my strengths. I, I went and said, listen, I... Can you come in and speak to these students, please, to, to, to the head of year? And she did. You know, so I've got no qualms about doing that. That's a tool in my locker, mm -hmm. which I'm going to use in those early days to 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 try and change that that ethos. And it and it's worked, you know, and 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 then bring in your other tools, you know. So there's nothing wrong with that. It's not a weakness to do that. Um, and I don't think anyone should see it as a weakness. Asking for support with any class like that is is really, really important. Um and remember you, remember your achievements before you start teaching this class. Remember what you do with your other classes. Yeah. Remember what you've done in your other schools, um, which I'm sure is, e even if you're an NQT, remember passing your training. Remember what you went through. Um, that's it for me. I know that's quite um, quick. I could have probably talked for like five minutes about each one of these, um, but it's been great to uh, to come on to teach me. And I've, enjoyed, I've watched every single presentation, enjoyed all of them. So cheers, guys. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom.